Big Noon Kickoff presents Bear Bets. I'm your host, Chris Felica, affectionately known as the Bear by a lot of people. I'm my co-host, Jeff Schwartz. Sammy P. Will Hill will join us for the Gambling Group Chat shortly. Sometimes you're the bug and sometimes you're the windshield. Last year I was the windshield and this year so far I've been the bug. Same, buddy. It, it's been a rough college football year. It, it, it's, and it's like you go through like the process of what's worked well in the past. You just kind of, you repeat it, you're doing it, and you're coming up the same methodology. You're getting to, you're getting to the plays the same way, and sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And, and just the difference between wins and losses, it, it, like the UCLA game, I like the right side, wrong result. UCLA was right side, wrong, wrong, wrong result. You look at a game like in the column where I had Tulane, you're up 20 and you you wound up not covering Cincinnati and Texas State, both covering in the second half last week before they left 15, 18 minutes of the game. So like you're there and then just didn't get the, uh, didn't get the wins at the end of the years, end of the end of the game rather. So I'm just going to keep grinding away and doing what we've done for, for years and we've done well. So. I just hated that living. I wish I would have built up like some of the equity that I had last year, like with 45, 24 yeah. and one, like I wish I would have, like maybe I could have gone like 38 and maybe take seven of those games yeah. from last year instead of roll being 21 over, over and then yeah. roll it over to this year. But why is it that the, the teams you, that you wager on always are minus four in turnovers? Like, they're, oh, like it, they're never plus four in turnovers. They're always minus four in turnovers. Tradition. They always have penalties go against them, like they're, or, they're, or, or they're not called a penalty. The teams you bet on are always the ones that, that have the turnover miss, issues. Miss and, the 25-yard field goal. And the referees screw them. And, yeah, the missed 25-yard field goal. Look, it's just the way – that's the hard part about about wagering, right, is is your process – you know, is it a process problem? Is it a, just a bad luck problem? Um, how much do you, are you, are you handicapping the games wrong? You're not right. the information right. And I think that's been, you know, it's been tough this year because I think we've come on this show a lot with more college football than NFL mm-hmm. and said, like, look, man, we think our process is fine. We're just not getting home the with pro- the wins. And again, the process, so, so many people love closing line value. When we get Purdue at plus two and a half and they go off favorite to lose. So it's like we got all the closing line value in the world on that one. Didn't matter one bit because it got their, you know, what's kicked. Yeah. So it's the way it works. I I, I would rather the worst thing that could happen, I I think, is is you're just handicapping it totally wrong. Like I I, I think if if your process is right and consistent, ultimately things will work out. But I I, I, four weeks left, four regular season weeks left. We got plenty of time. Plenty of time. And bowls. Bowl games. Bowl games are hard though because of the players sitting down. I feel like it's gotten a lot tougher for bowl bowl games now. They have. Uh, College Bowl playoff rankings are out, which means now we know who the best teams in the country are. Allegedly. 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 Uh, And of course, this is a ranking that comes out mostly for us Mm -hmm. to talk about it. Um, But did anything change for you in college football? Because for me, it it just kind of, the teams are who they are. They can win. They play each other like nothing changes for me, except I'll tell you this, Bear. Except this is what changes in the sport, in my opinion. We have a month left of the regular season. Is that now it feels real? So the players and coaches that might have thought like, "Oh, we're supposed to be here, but now we're here, or we're right where we're supposed to be." Like now the number is actually attached and says college football playoff. For a lot of teams that might not have sort of felt this before or been in the situation, it's real now. It feels real now. I'm glad you said that because that. A former coach did tell me that, like th- that is the biggest difference. Like, now you know exactly where you stand, yes. and maybe you're not used to having a number next to you. And now all of a sudden you see like number like, three, like number, Missouri this weekend, number four. It's like wow, we actually we're yeah. kind of in this, or oh, we're here. We need to. We're really going to need to go out and blow people out now and make an impression. Yeah. So. The teams are aware now, and that certainly can have both yeah. a positive and or maybe potentially a negative effect. Like, let's take Missouri George this weekend. So George can certainly certainly use the motivation of worst second, right? I mean, of course, that's mm-hmm. what every team's gonna right. use. But now Missouri has like a real number next to their name. Like they're like they they think to themselves, we win this game. Um, we sort of control, you know, obviously LSU, they they lost LSU, so they need that, you know, Alabama to win. But like like that game to me feels a little different. Well, they're in di- they're in different. Sorry, different, different yes. It feels a little different to me because they have numbers next to their name in a cultural playoff than it does when they're just ranked for both teams, especially for Georgia, who the motivation thing seems to work for them all the time. Yeah, no, it, it did clearly last week, and it did obviously against uh, Kentucky as well. So, 
But yeah, that, that, that's an interesting game this week. I, I, I didn't have a play on that. I, I don't yeah. have because I think Missouri's offense is pretty good. But typically, when Georgia plays these ranked teams in the regular season, they you hold were, them. You were on Florida last weekend. No, I reason. wasn't. I was on Georgia. Oh, Georgia, I'm sorry, Georgia. Georgia yes. Yeah. But like, if you if you go back, usually when they play these ranked teams, like their defense stands up. And I think it go. It's I think it's uh, actually I have the note right here. You were on Georgia. You were on Georgia against Kentucky too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but, but, but last seven regular season games against ranked opponents, Georgia's allowed to total eight points a game, never more than 13. So they typically these spots, their defense plays a lot. But I, I think that might have been, if you're asked, maybe not rankings related, but like overall related, yeah. college football related, I think that was my takeaway from last week. When push comes to shove, when they want to play and they're motivated, Georgia's still the best team in the country. Absolutely, I've said that for weeks now. That like they've been playing with their food a lot of time this year. I mean, and people, and, people have been saying Michigan's better. Which, but Michigan hasn't played anybody. Georgia's at least. I guess that's they sort of have played nobody either. Both right. This is right. I mean, I guess they, they played Florida and Kentucky. That's Michigan hasn't played anyone there, have they? No. no? Michigan, Michigan, Michigan State. They played Nebraska. It, yeah. The thing about Nebraska is, yeah, Nebraska's probably the best team that they've. Uh, they played. The thing about Georgia is that we might have to admit Carson Beck is good. <laughs> and like that, he has gotten and, a <laughs> lot better and good, and that makes sense. Yeah, you get you get better as the year goes on. Imagine that. Yeah, and he should. And so it's. Look, I think it just makes it real, right? I mean, look out west. Like now, it feels real with Oregon and Washington. Like it's t- the, the 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 committee's telling you if one of those teams wins out, they're in the playoff, right? Because the way Michigan and Ohio State to play each other. Georgia might have to play Alabama, LSU, right? Uh, you know, Florida State has probably the of the top teams. They have the easiest schedule left. Florida State does, yes. So they, you know, opportunity. But but, but I think that the committee is telling you if they lose, they're they're out, right? Like it's kind of like setting up. So you can kind of get this this idea of where the committee thinks yep. certain teams are at and where they might end up being at. It kind of gives them a path. So again, it becomes real. So it's nice. And what's real? Or your wagers every week, which we're gonna we're gonna get right. Oh, and unfortunately, they are real. Yes, yes, I'm aware. Yes, they're real each week, guys. We wager on this stuff. We we talk about it in, sometimes. In, I don't know why we do, job. but we do. <laughs> we, we do it. College football this year has been who it is. What it is. Okay, here we go. Bear the first wager of the week for you, Virginia Tech at Louisville. Louisville is a nine and a half point favorite. <laughs> Virginia Tech is four and four overall. The three one they see conference. The Hokies are five and three against the spread. To beat Syracuse 38-10 last week in Louisville, seven and one, four and one in the ACC. They're four and four against the spread in the first playoff rankings. The Cardinals come in at 15. Where are you going here? I'm taking Virginia Tech at nine and a half, and I never would have imagined that I would have been saying that a few weeks ago. But you look at Virginia Tech; they've won three or four. The game that they lost against Florida State, they worked themselves back into that game in yeah. the second half again against the Knolls. It made me finally there is real legitimate optimism uh, in, in Blacksburg, which would be a great thing because that's one of the great uh, college football communities. Oh yeah, and and fan bases to and to see a game at Lane Stadium. So I took the, I took the Hokies. Louisville has found itself in, in, they, they wound up pulling away from Notre Dame in the second half, but they found themselves in games against them, some weaker competition. I, you, you beat Indiana by seven, beat Georgia Tech by five, you beat NC State by three. I, I, Jack Plummer really hasn't been good since that Notre Dame game. He, three touchdowns, four picks in those four games, under 150 passing yards twice. So I, I the Louisville defense, I think, will have to carry them in the, in the running game. I don't think you can necessarily rely on Plumber to have uh, a big game. Yeah. It feels like it's too many points here. It's it's worth, you, it might be if you can buy it up to 10 for minus yeah. 120 to maybe get, get that number of 10 in there as well. I, I'd suggest doing that. Speaking with the Louisville offense, it's worth knowing they scored 23 points last weekend and then 21 the week before. Like they have not, their offense has not been quite the same right. as they've gone deeper into ACC conference slate. And so Virginia Tech maybe can get themselves here. The Louisville Notre Dame result was like the most easily bet. Oh, yeah. It was like very obvious. So, all right, we have Virginia Tech plus nine and a half here. Possibly, if you want to buy to 10, go ahead. Uh, the next game here is a big one in Tuscaloosa. It's LSU at Alabama. Alabama favored by three. Total of 61. LSU 6-2. Six and two. They're ranked 13th in the initial CFP rankings. They're 5-3 and three against the spread with all eight of their games going over. Alabama 7-1. Only lost to Texas early in the season. They're 5-3 and three against the spread. They start the CFP rankings at 9. Where are you going, Bear? I know the LSU defense is bad, um, but at the same time, 
I'm not sure Alabama's offense is one that's going to be able to really expose their back end. Milrow's gotten better throwing the ball, but but I still don't know if Alabama will be able to do things like Missouri, yeah. and Florida State, and some of those other teams that have the better quarterback wide receiver play uh, have done to the to the Bayou Bengals. So, and I have concerns about about Alabama on the other side of the ball. Like we saw Texas had hit big plays yeah. against their secondary. We, we we saw Tennessee hit hit some plays like and neighbors and Daniels and those guys that they dwarf what Alabama has faced uh, so far. Daniels, his legs were a big factor yeah. last year, 95 rushing yards in, in the upset in, in Baton Rouge. Like this line is super short. It's only a field goal. Yeah. You got to go back to the to 2010 to find the last time Alabama was this short of a, of a home favorite. So and they lost that game to Auburn. They right? lost. They, they yeah. blew that game to Auburn. That, that was they, they got up big, and then and then and Auburn wound up coming back. Uh, LSU is, already, is the only team that have already a pair of upset wins over Alabama in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, uh, I think there's a really good chance they get a third. I, and n- normally the odds makers will err on the side of caution, and like make Alabama a bigger favorite yeah. than normal, knowing that they're going to get Alabama, Alabama. But here I think it's lower because. I think they're looking for Alabama money, and I, and I think there's a sense maybe internally in their power ratings that they think LSU might be the right side. So I took LSU plus three. Um, we'll see if I'm right or not. The last time I strongly disagreed with you on a wager, well, we bet a bagel on it. It was the Oregon-Texas Tech game. I luckily covered that one. Um, <laughs> and you still I, I still bring you felt bad. You felt yes, bad for me because that bad. was one of my yes. terrible, terrible beats of the year. It was. It did, it continue, I, I should have known what was coming then, <laughs> by the way. The, the warning signs were there. Here's 2023 yeah. in a nutshell. But but thank you for, um, for my bagel. Yeah, I do bring bagels. I, I like Alabama a lot in this game because I think that when you go on the road like LSU and you can play zero defense, you're not going to cover a game like this. And Alabama offensively has been up and down, but Milrow has kind of incrementally gone gotten better each week and their ability to push the ball down the field, which is what he does best. LSU secondary is not good enough to contain any sort of deep passing game. And it's, it's, this game to me has nothing to do with the idea of, Oh, Alabama's only a three point favorite. Nick Saban can't bet against him. I just think it's hard to back a team on the road that cannot play any defense whatsoever. And like, there's, there's no, there's not even, I was looking for like some sort of number for LSU. Like, Oh, this is what they do well on defense. It's nothing. No, nothing. And, and so, somehow they got out of Columbia, Missouri with the win. Well, I know. A really good. Missouri yeah, I, I don't, offense. but I don't think 49, 39 is going to be the final score of this game though. If it is LSU <laughs> winning. Yes, I think so. Um, you, you mentioned Jay Daniels running the ball against Alabama. They've always struggled with, with running quarterbacks. Like, but then again, who does, who does, who, who, who does, everyone does like everyone. It's always a problem because they're so athletic. We're going to talk about this. I believe later in in the gambling group chats, one of our topics lined up for, for Jane Daniels Heisman. Like this is the Heisman moment, right? If, if you like him to win the Heisman bet it now, because if he wins this game, he's shooting straight up the, the Heisman yeah. board, right? Like you, you just take it now. I think if, uh, if you like him, all right, let's get to the next game, Illinois at Minnesota. Number is uh, two and a half at some books right now. Total 43 and a half. Illinois is three and five with a single conference win. They're one and seven against the spread. Minnesota, five and three, two and three in conference, and three and five against the spread. Where are you going here, Bear? Well, it's Big Ten West. It will be ugly to watch, which is the the motto of the Big Ten West. We 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 play no offense. It's offensive to watch. I, following blowing uh, blowing that game against uh, Wisconsin, Illinois at least was off. You want to take something positive away from that game? It was their best rushing output of the season. So if Brett Bielma has an offense, we can just kind of rely on the running game, get by the offensive line, play complimentary football. That bodes well, I think, for Illinois uh, moving forward. Minnesota, I think, is a team that I don't know how they're continually winning games. Uh, They struggle on offense. They struggle to put points on the board. Um, It's basically been been their opponents imploding. So uh, my, my, my wager here is that Illinois will not implode. I think they'll have a safe game plan running the ball. I took Bielma plus two and a half. Here's one thing to, to note. So uh, we know that Iowa's offensive coordinator, not, not related to this game yet, but Iowa's offensive coordinator, uh, Brian Ferentz, is going to be let go, right? Mm-hmm. Because he had to reach the, the threshold of 25 points a game. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's such a high number. Zero of the seven Big Ten West teams are averaging 25 points a game right now. It, it's a, And I saw forget what the Twitter handle was or the account or what the exact number was. 
it, it, I think the I think the account listed like the 12, 10 or twelve lowest scoring offenses in the Power Five. Yeah, and eight of them were from the Big Ten. Yeah. How are the West Coast schools going to survive in this conference, buddy? I, 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 don't, I don't know how Oregon's <laughs> going to go go in there and, and be able to. Uh, how are they going to go to Champaign and win? I, yeah, I, I just don't I, know I don't how that either. possibly. But that brings up a, a better macro question with, with how do we, and maybe it kind of circles back a little bit to the college football playoff rankings. Like, how do you view Ohio State and Michigan and Penn State? Yeah, their defenses are really good, yeah. but these offenses suck. Well, I think you just have to take it in, in, in when you play these teams. I mean, look, I, I have a general rule where it, if it, it's supposed to look, look like it's supposed to look, and that's a positive. So if you're Ohio State and your defense is good and you play good against bad teams, you're supposed to play good against bad teams. Like, like that to me is a not a positive, but it just checks the box. Okay, we play well against a bad team. Because how many times do we see a defense – that we think is good plays a bad team and they suck, right? And, and and that bad offense scores a bunch of points. Like you're to me, you're checking the box. You're checking the box of Michigan, checking the box of de- dominating bad teams. Ohio State checking the box of beating Wisconsin at Wisconsin, covering that game. Like I think they covered, right? Or did they cover? no, was no, for one by fourteen. Yes, so it was either sorry, it was depending close. on what you got, yeah. you either lost but, or pushed. Like, but the point is, like you're doing what you should be doing if you're Ohio State and Michigan. Mm-hmm. So that to me checks the box. Okay. Now, when they play each other, obviously, it's the best offense they're going to play on either side. And so we'll know more about them in that game. But to me, they're they're checking the right box because other teams, like the team we're going to talk about next in USC, checks none of the boxes, right? Like, it, so you, <laughs> you check the box, right? The next game up here is out west, the big game in the Coliseum. Washington at USC. USC again, three points. The total 76 and a half right now might climb. As we continue to talk about this game, Washington's A no, they're ranked fifth in the CFP. They're three, four, and one against the spread. They have not covered in their last four games. They're pushing against Oregon. That's why uh, USC is uh, seven and two. They narrowly beat Cal 50 49 last weekend. USC is two and seven against the spread. Eight of their games have gone over this season. Lincoln Riley overs is the way to go. Bear, what do you got here? The fight in the heart of that USC Trojan team. Last week, you were kidding on those text messages, I think, but they actually fought pretty hard. Didn't they? They were down fourteen I, I, points, and I was kidding at first, and then it, when when they did come back, I guess you know that I, I, I said it and said it in jest, but it's actually pretty impressive for them to like every every points. reason in the world to just lick the stamp and mail it in. And they, they were probably one. me, you, and four other people watching the game. They're down 49 and fourteen minutes left in the fourth quarter and scored twenty one straight points. Like, they didn't have to do that. They could have just laid down. and Which is play. what their offense can do. Yeah, and we'll also Cal fumbled the ball. But let's get to this yeah. game. Go ahead. What do you got? Uh, UW, you, you hit on that. Like, their, their inability to cover lately. They, they've been begging to get beat by inferior to by Arizona State. Yeah. Uh, Stan- Stanford dropped Stanford, down. Stanford fourth down, down pass. Down conversion yeah. that would, and the SC defense has been a punchline. I don't get any stops. But Washington, I, I, I think, like, last year their defense was a problem. And like it appeared maybe that their defense was somewhat improved, but they don't get any pressure on the quarterback at all. Like that's a bad, bad deal <laughs> this week against Williams and SC yeah. and the weapons that they have. So I think people are forgetting too. Like SC still controls his destiny to get back to the Pac-12 championship. Oh, yeah. Because the Notre Dame loss, obviously out of conference. The, the people think I think see the two losses and automatically think, oh no, it's gonna be Washington, Oregon again in the Pac-12 title no. game. Like it, it's not. Like SC's got U dub, they got Oregon, yep. they got UCLA. So it's right there for them to get back in, in despite of how much of a disappointment the season yeah. has been and how much of a disappointment their offense has been viewed as saying like. There's also an above average chance that I might hate myself for taking SC plus the three come, come the second quarter if they're down 28 7. But I'm going to take SC here. I, I, I joke with the, the, the big noon guys on a call a couple of weeks ago when they were talking about Washington. It was right after the Oregon game. Yeah. Like, oh, well, who's going to be who's going to beat Washington? I'm like, SC is going to beat Washington. This game is really interesting because of Washington's defense. Uh, also, Michael Penix is completing 60% of passes the last three weeks, but we won't talk about that. Here's our defensive stats. I'm going to read this to you guys. It's, it's important. It's, it's interesting. So, yards per drive, they're 112th, but they're 42nd in points per drive. That doesn't make sense, right? Typically, if you allow a lot of yards, you allow a lot of points. Mm-hmm. Uh, the third down defense is 97th in the country. It's terrible. Fourth down, they're 32nd. Because Arizona was over 3 and fourth down. And what did Oregon? Oregon was over 3 
ASU was two for six, including one of those was a pick six the other direction. And Stanford was one for three. And they dropped that pass. I mean, like that, that explains their defense. Explosive play rate ninth. The, the red zone opportunity uh, score rate, opponent score rate's 31st, but they allow 94th in, in red zone touchdown percentage. Like it doesn't, none of this makes sense. They're 28th in pressure. They're 133rd in sacks. They have 10 sacks this season. That's, That's it. So their defense to me feels like a house of cards. Like the fourth down defense is holding everything up because the other teams aren't, aren't converting fourth downs. Like to me, I, I think this game Called is like coin flippy. Is 45, 42, 48, 45, 49, 46. I mean, like whatever combination you want to get to. Um, I, I, I don't bet 49, on 49, 46. That might be a score gami. I don't bet on USC because I'm 0 for 5 this year betting on USC games, but I, I think USC is the side here. And the, and the over. All right, let's get to your, your four games so far. We've covered before we get to gambling group chat. You have Virginia Tech plus nine and a half on the road at Louisville. You have LSU plus the three points at Alabama. Illinois plus two and a half at Minnesota. And you have USC at home. The home dogs, the Trojans plus three points fighting for their Pac-12 lives here. All right, gambling group chat is next. It's going to be me, Bear, Sammy, Will Hill. It's a great time as usual. We cover all sports, you know, all sports, all topics in the sport of college football. We do that next. Here it is. All right, time again for the uh, the gambling group chat. And guys, we have our uh, work cut out for us. I've, I've been told that last week somehow was our highest uh, rated, downloaded, viewed episode of the season. So we need we need we need some more winners this week. Clearly, I'm thinking though. It was because of last week's big brown pen uh, information there, which which ultimately wound up getting through. What a Friday night that was. So, so right off the bat, Sammy, I just got to ask you, 309-051, 309-052, Yale Brown, talk to me. We'll have something. That's a tease in this industry. We'll have something. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most fun I've had watching – a game on a Friday night. I was up in the mountains. I was on my iPad. Everyone was around me just hanging out. They were like, what are you doing? Schwartz? I'm watching an Ivy league game. It's very important right now. I need to see the over hit. And then it hit on a safety and uh, Sammy, I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun Friday night following this Ivy league, this Ivy league game with about how many people were, were, were in the crowd bear. A thousand more, people. I was going to say there are probably more people like on this group text that we're watching chat yeah. right now that when we're in the at, at historic Franklin, field. Franklin field, by the way, that was, um, Arguably the worst weather site I was ever involved in with when back on college game day. We did it. We did a Harvard Penn game one year. I think it was 2002, I think it was. It was just like hail and ice and freezing rain. It was way off. Oh, it was brutal. Brutal. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, brutal kind of, and kind of, yeah, exactly. Combined. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like the Bournemouth Liverpool match. Uh, <laughs> In in, in, uh, in Bournemouth on, on Wednesday that we wound up getting the Bournemouth team total home. All right. Anyway, en enough of that football and more of this football. Uh, first college football playoff rankings out the other night. Um, no, I don't think anything really surprising. Will, was there anything in there that maybe triggered a futures play for you or maybe something that you saw that might trigger a play for this weekend? No, I, I've seen this too many times with these college football rankings. The first one to me, it just it goes one ear and out the other. They, they can make the rules, they can break the rules. To me, the the one that's important is the last one. So, um, you know, anything that happens now, they can trump with whatever reasoning or logic they they choose to use or choose to not use. So, uh, I looked at the odds before, the odds after, nothing moved, and I think that was the appropriate non movement. Jeff. I mean, the takeaways for me were that the committee made it very clear, I think, that one through nine have a chance to control their own destiny. If, if you look at those teams right now, like those are the teams I think you, you can only wager on to make a playoff or win a championship because that's the, they're the only teams right now that control their Even Alabama, obviously, right? They beat LSU this weekend. They can beat Georgia. They're in. Even Texas, Oklahoma, Oregon, Washington. They just do their job and they're in. So to me, that kind of showed you that those top nine teams are the ones they feel right now can can make their own destiny essentially. Everyone else below that needs a little bit of help. And so help can happen, but it's it seems unlikely in those situations that a team who's 12, 13, 14, 15 right now is going to be able to surpass one of the teams in the top nine. Sammy, I have a homework project for you. I have, I have an assignment for you, Sammy. I, I, and we, yeah. we need you to find a uh, a we need, I need we need you to find a sports book that will allow us to parlay LSU money line with Jaden Daniels to win the Heisman trophy this week. Uh, can, can we can we get that? 
Any any way? Yeah, you that's like we, we, that's we, like we, me we, trying to parlay Will Levis to throw a pick and the Steelers to win this weekend. They don't let me do that either, unfortunately. <laughs> um, I don't think anybody will take that. Maybe Chris Andrews would take it at South Point. He's creative. He likes taking stuff like that. I think we have to remember, boys and girls, that this college football playoff ranking show is made for television, and it's also going to all solve itself. You know, all the Michigan people are all upset because Ohio State is number one, but Ohio State has had the best schedule so far. I mean, name better wins than at Notre Dame, home against Penn State, and then at Wisconsin. Now, I know Wisconsin isn't the Wisconsin that we're used to, but still going into Camp Randall is not easy to go in there and win. So Ohio State has the best wins. But when you play it forward, we're going to find out on November 25th who the best team in the Big Ten is. And our numbers right now say Michigan 4-4.5 four, four at home against Ohio State. So on a neutral, Michigan's probably a slight favorite. Michigan will be favored in that game at the end of the season, and it will all figure itself out. I also think, too, if we get Oregon and Washington again in the Pac-12 championship, what do you think? Well, like Oregon three, Oregon three and a half. Is that fair? The way things are trending, that might be a little bit light, which is it's crazy to think you don't want to overreact too much because what they played less than a month ago. I think it's three weeks ago now when it was three, but that was in Washington and, and Washington really since the second half of that game. And, and we'll probably get to that game since the second half of that Oregon game just hasn't looked like the same team, all sorts of injuries on defense. They can't run the ball. I don't know if Penix is healthy. So yeah, you're probably, you're probably getting on the, on the right side of three. It might even be, you know, be three and a half, four. Uh, once you get past that, it's sort of a dead zone, but Oregon's clearly going to be favored here. Oregon, even money to win that game right now uh, in, you know, we would have thought a few weeks ago with their schedule, that would be uh, a surprising line. Oregon, I think plus 175 to make the playoffs, which I, I think is a good bet. I I'm all in on Oregon here. I know Jeff thinks we're, we're sort of trolling him, but Oregon has the path set up. I think they're going to win out. I think they're going to get in. So it should be fascinating. I I've changed my opinion on this trolling thing. Oregon is a playoff team. They, they embrace it. Yes. Thank you. They're, yes. they're a playoff team. It doesn't mean they're going to make the playoff. But they're good enough to be a playoff team. It just is. And look, the, the reason why I'm a little anti-12 team playoff, and there's many reasons, we don't have to get into that now, is that I think it's hard for a team like Oregon to win a championship in a 12 team playoff, really, because you need the, the depth to be able to withstand. And Oregon's getting there. But it's much easier to win, obviously, a BCS championship was one game, or a cultural playoff is two games now, four games. Like, like this is the year. If we're going to try to do it, again, I'm not saying we're going to do it, but it, it, this is the year to do it, right? It's the last year of a 14 playoff. A 12 team playoff makes schools outside of Georgia, Ohio State. State, Alabama, Michigan. I mean, it's hard to win four straight games with the depth that you need over that stretch or three straight games. It, the, the, the 12 team playoff is going to favor the traditional powers way more than even does now. And the 12 team playoff, like we know, like right now, we'd know who's in it. Like all the like all these teams are going would would, would be in it. Like, like would there would be like legit no drum like that's the thing now who's gonna make it is it oregon or is it going to be watched like we'd know both oregon and Washington. well i shouldn't say that because i was going to add I, 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 but you would think that yes. washington would be but there's a lot less drama with the way the season yes. plays out but i was going to ask you jeff schwartz yes at usc home utah at oregon state yeah home wazoo what will the university of washington's record be over those final four games it's pretty interesting because, uh, as we talked about earlier, their defense, it feels like a house of cards. They have some good numbers and some bad numbers, and, and the depth, as Will mentioned, like this is why you need depth in T-season. Right? You're going to have injuries. Injuries are part of football. Um, and the thing about Penix, guys, he can put in 70% of passes the first five weeks, and then the Oregon game, Arizona State game, Stanford game, is hovering about 60%. So he's not even operating at, at full capacity right now. The game at USC this weekend, I don't know how you guys feel about it. I, I, I'm i 0 for 5 wager on USC games this year in any direction. USC, the over, the total, the under, whatever direction. I think it's it's USC can win this game, right? I mean, they, they fought hard against Cal. They were down 14 points in the fourth quarter, and we were joking about it on text, but, like, they kept battling, battling, battling. Uh, I do not think Washington beats Oregon State. That's the one game where, like, firmly, I don't think they go in Corvallis and beat Oregon State. Um, they could certainly lose this weekend. I, I, I mean, Sammy, do you, I, I, I'm not betting USC because I, I suck betting USC, but I, I certainly feel like USC plus three is the play here. I like over. I, I don't care. I'm not going to overthink it. No pun intended. I mean, oh, these two on. teams could score 90. I, I think this is like a 48-40 final. <laughs> Either way, um, I, I'm not bullish on Washington here. I'm, If anything, guys, I'm nervous about this Penix-Heisman 
ticket that I have, and I shouldn't be nervous because you should be. I did everything right. I did my job, you know, to get seven to one on Penix to win the Heisman, and I'm terrified that they're going to lay an egg and watch it be the last week against Washington State or something like that. I'm just, I feel, I felt better when it was seven to one than I do now when he's like, you know, three to one, if that makes any sense. But, but this game this weekend, I, I'd probably need 81 to go under. We were talking about this before the show. I, I'd go over. I go over 76, 76 and a half. It's climbing up. It's 77 in Vegas right now. Who's getting stops in this game? Who? Yeah, for me, it's USC. I just think Washington, like I said, so beat up on defense, can't run the ball. I don't know how healthy Penix is. Remember, Penix has gotten beat up his whole career. He's always dealt with injuries. So to me, I think I think it's a good buy low spot on USC. And I, as I spoke with Jeff earlier in the show to put you, I was on uh, USC as well. I, I just think Washington's kind of, kind of been begging to get beat the last couple of weeks, and uh, their defense has been problematic. Uh oh, their 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 play by play guy is fantastic. But he put out a tweet saying that they've won three straight games in three straight weeks, being outgained and losing the turnover battle. Hard to do. Yeah, hard to do. It is. Yeah. But, but we'll hit on something there, too. Like, like that was the thing with Penix back in India. He had never been able to really follow, get, stay healthy for an entire yeah. season. That was always holding him back. And last year, he finally did. But but you're right. It does it does look like he's taken a, a few too many hits this year. And um, hopefully, for, for Sammy's sake, it, it does get there. But uh, hopefully, for my sake, Jaden Daniels beats Alabama <laughs> this week. And they go to the SEC championship game and he wins the Heisman Trophy. But but I think that Sammy, you're covering on Jaden Daniels too, though, aren't you? I'm not on Jaden. I have McCarthy and Penix. That's it. Oh. This could be this could be problematic. <laughs> I heard that there. sigh from New York there. <laughs> I heard that like internal <laughs> sigh there. Well, I, I I have McCarthy too. So yeah, how about that? How about we how, how about we split the difference and we just give it McCarthy, to JJ? Like, I I Michigan fans are going to quarterback of the number one ranked but team. Like, in the really, that's, that's what it really, is. Really, really like, is, look, come on. McCarthy I, is I, not the Heisman winner this season. I mean, he might win the Heisman because Michigan wins all their games. Sure. But no one's watched him play one time this year and been like, that's the Heisman winner. Caleb Williams. But, I mean, has those plays. Michael Penix has those plays. Jane Daniels has those plays. Like not one time. If you watch one play this year and thought to yourself, oh, that, that's, that's him right there. The Heisman winner. I know people out there that talk about him being, a, being a top, Six ten. Well, the, the draft is different, in my opinion, because the draft looks at different things than the Heisman voters look at. But like, I mean, the, the draft guys shoot up or go down all the time. It doesn't. That's a different story. But I mean, like Bo Nix, I saw in a fifth round, a fifth pick overall. That's a little high for me. I'm it's, I mean, that's, it's a lot like, high for me. I'm, I'm like that's a little much. But I could see Bo winning the Heisman. He's made plays this year. That, like, and that th th there's a Heisman play. That's the one guy I don't have that, that I am not covered on is Bo Nix because there, there is a if he they go twelve and one. Uh, maybe Michigan loses a game, Ohio State loses a game, uh, LSU doesn't win this week. Like there, there is a path for Bo Nix, I think, to win the Heisman Trophy, and he, he's the one guy that I don't have right now that does that does concern me. I mean, he'll he'll have like sixty seven starts before before he wins the Heisman. That's an, that's crazy. I I never thought Bo would be even in this conversation. It's crazy. But by, by the way, this we talked we talked on Michigan and McCarthy, and we talked about it how. You don't think there's going to be a backlash by, by any vote, voters or uh, the committee? I mean, even uh, Boo Corrigan came out, oh, it's an NCAA deal. Uh, Bruce Feldman and, and Max Olson had a great so, story on really the athletic good, yeah. the, this week that I suggest you read. And then just sitting in the room before with Jeff before we got going here, uh, Pete Thamel from ESPN had a, uh, a story and he spoke to some people, I guess, that were on a call uh, w with, with the Big Ten yesterday. And these coaches are pissed. Here are a couple of quotes from the story. I don't think the Big Ten understood how every how upset everyone was. The tenor of the call was asking the Big Ten leadership to show the asking the Big Ten to show leadership, the conference and the presidents that an unprecedented violation of the rules would require unprecedented action from the Big Ten. According to five sources familiar with the call, a chorus of voices encouraged Petiti, the the, the, the the Big Ten, to take action against Michigan in a call that was described as both intense and emotional. Collectively, the coaches want the Big Ten to act right now. What are we waiting on? We know what happened. This isn't going away. It isn't going away, but what are they going to do? Are they going to suspend? I mean, here's the thing. 
any suspension, will, they're going to be sued. The court will stay it. And we're going to end up having to fight this in the offseason, right? Like, and the, the question I have about any sort of punishment is a college football playoff is not associated with, with the NCAA. If they say Michigan has a bowl ban, a postseason bowl ban, could the CFP just say, ah, we don't care, Michigan's in the playoff? Like, are, are, they, are they just going to not vote for Michigan if they're in the playoff? Are they going to vacate that spot? Like, what happens? Because CFP, again, is not associated with, with the NCAA. That's a question that we'll, we might cross that road at some point, guys, but, like, it, it hasn't seemed to matter yet. I think maybe we should do this, you know, table this conversation for the NFL pod, because to me, this is w whether Jim Harbaugh coaches the Raiders or coaches the Bears next year, because I think this is the fallout. I think this could be, you know, some sanctions and Harbaugh yes. just says, you know, enough of this. I'm going to go coach in the NFL, which I think is very, very real possibility. And Michigan should not have any trouble on the field this week. Um, for sure. A, ma a massive favorite. Um, the, the game that I'm headed to, I think Texas K-State, is a guy. I think Texas needs to be very worried this week. Um, their offense has been, well, I shouldn't say has, but it's one game. Uh, was limited last week. A lot of the Malik Murphy passes were at behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, that's probably not going to work uh, against Kansas State. Now, the defensive line's a little small. Uh, Brooks could have a big game, but if they stack the box and, and they don't run, they're going to need Murphy to be able to throw the ball downfield. Uh, K State's offensive line is really good. Uh, since going to the dual quarterback system, uh, their offense has been very good. Like this line is eerily low. I think it's down to four in some places. Like it, it, it's, I don't, I don't know how you feel, Sammy, it, 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 Texas K state, a game you want to get involved in. Yeah. I played under 51 right on the open. You can find a 50 right now. And that is sort of crawling right now. Um, <clears throat> 49 and a half at a lot of shops. I think eventually we're going to get through that number, and that's a big old key number in college football. I think you're dead on about Kansas State's ability to solve the short passing game for Texas. I mean, Texas throws these screens against BYU, and it's just like those hogs on the O line. The Jeff Schwartzes get outside, and it's you know it's a 25 yard gain. You're going to get four against Kansas State, maybe five yards. So I think that's a really live under, and I don't know. I'm going to make this like plus a quarter that we see Arch Manning this week. I think it's very possible that we see Arch. That, 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 that'll be interesting because I, I get the sense that tr they don't want to play him um, and, and maybe risk losing a red shirt, but maybe there's a situation where if the offense does struggle, he does need to play. Will, do you have anything on uh, K-State, uh, Texas? No, I think you said it well. I think Kansas State is very live. The offensive line, uh, this is just a well-coached team. So I, I would, uh, it would be Kansas State or nothing for me. I, I haven't bet it yet, but I think you're talking me into it. I, I like Kansas State here. I think. How how much did you win last week, by the way, on your uh, on your desert oh. on your desert uh, money line parlay with Arizona and Arizona State? You know, I, I look when we talk about these games, I bet everything I, I give out. I wouldn't give it out if I didn't bet it for whatever reason last week. I was just, it, it came to my mind. If you parlay Arizona, Arizona, Arizona state, those have been my, my sort of two pet teams recently on this show. I was like, Hey, it's six to one. That might be a fun one. I bet them each individually, but I did not parlay it. So um, I don't know if you do the math, but if you multiply anything by zero bear, it, it results in a zero. So yeah, frustrating, <laughs> yeah, yeah, tough yeah, one, but easy, hopefully yeah, somebody yeah. out there played it. I, I, I believe I, I, this is a long time ago, but I believe the, uh, the rule was you cannot divide by zero. I, I think was the, uh, uh, the the mathematic rule with zero. But you and I, I think, are on the opposite side here in uh, in ASU Utah. Though I, I I like Utah. I think it's a good bounce back bet spot for the youth. But you, you're gonna you're gonna ride uh, my man Scatabo in the Sun Devil offense here. I'll tell you this: you have a stronger handicap than I do because for me, it's just a loyalty play. I've been riding this team, I don't know, four or five <laughs> times in a row here, and just I, I'm of the belief ride them till they buck you. So they haven't done it yet. I just I think the Colorado game is when I jumped on board. I was like, hey, you look at their turnovers; it's skewed. This team is underrated. They've played well. That was a decisive win last week, not just an upset, but a decisive upset. So uh, I'll take yeah. the eleven. I'm certainly worried about what you said. Where hey, this is you're going to get Utah here on their best behavior, uh, mad off of a loss. I understand that. I might be walking into a hornet's nest, but ride until they buck you so go sun devils yeah I, i'm mad at chip right now after last week and oh. ucla somehow not covering oh, that boy. game uh we we were having this kind of they're, they're laying three at arizona this week i don't know if i want any part of laying three right now against arizona we, we were kind of joking about this uh before we got going sammy like 
is Arizona like the second best team right now by the way they're playing in the, in the Pac-12? Like they they they're a live home dog here, aren't they? Well, Colorado's one, right? And then Arizona, <laughs> is that what we're we're going there? Yes. Uh, I can tell yeah. you this. Arizona is the best cover team in the country. They are 7 and 1 ATS, the only team with an equal record UNLV. How about the Rebs wow. with a nice cover against Fresno yep. State? So those two teams are seven and one, eight games, seven covers, Arizona and UNLV. So I don't know if they're the second best team in the Pac-12, but they are the best cover team in the country. And I tell you what, that coach is probably not long for that job. I don't think he's going to be there that long. Not not a typical he's UCLA bummed. team, he's not a typical. Bummed. Yeah, he has. Not not a typical Chip Kelly team, Bear. I know you know Chip Kelly, and uh, you're familiar, obviously, with his team's explosive on offense. Usually they just try to piece together a few stops on defense. That's totally – it's kind of the opposite this year. Their offense is not a typical Chip Kelly offense. They're really good on defense, but uh, I, I just don't know how well that offense is going to travel here. Yeah, and, and, and you, you knew the back door. You, you knew the touchdown was coming, right? I, so it, it, it was so predictable and so ugly. When, when one team gains nearly 500 yards and the other team scores their first touchdown with three minutes left, it's assumed the team that's with 500 yards is going to cover that game. And, I, uh, dude, I was on UCLA, too. It, 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 was, it was ugly. Do you just have to fade Colorado now? The rest of like I just feel like they've, they've been uncompetitive for the last month, basically. <clears throat> Oregon State's awful loss going to Colorado. The line's like 13 and a half. It feels like a like a heavy line, but I mean the Beavers are still playing for something. Colorado can't block or tackle. They they, they can't do the basic things required. They forced four turnovers in the first half. That's why they covered that game. They're not forcing four turnovers against the Beavers, I'll tell you that. I'm I'm glad you said that because when when I would when I was sitting in there in the room finishing finishing yeah. breakfast before, I, I wanted to see if they had Heisman odds up in, in New York. And unfortunately, you cannot bet. Well, well, we're not alone. Connecticut, we can't bet the Heisman. New York, we can't bet the Heisman either. But they do have regular season win totals still up, adjusted. Colorado's sitting here four and four. There are four games left. Oregon State, Arizona, at Wazoo, at Utah. You can, I mean, again, some people are opposed to laying a price, but you can go under five and a half at minus two fifty five. Under five and a half, they're going to win. They're winning two games. I, I mean, the Cougars have fallen off a map, so I don't know about that game. But that game's going to be in the freezing Pullman, and it's just hard to play in Pullman no matter what. Um, they get Arizona in their place, I believe. But Arizona's playing the best football we talked about outside of Oregon, the Pac-12 Conference. They're not beating Utah. They're not winning this weekend, I promise you that. Oregon State's off a loss, a bad loss against That's Arizona. At best. That, that fake punt, that fake field goal was just, I couldn't believe that they did that. Um, yeah, that, they're not winning five, six games, right, guys? Well, they're not winning six games. I wish Bear didn't mention that because now I have the urge to bet an irresponsible amount of money on that under at five and a half. Yes. That's, just, that's oh, a bad line. I mean, right. I need to which, sign up your money which, uh, a little bit, but it's only a month. Okay. That's that's just that, I'm doing that. That's ridiculous. Know, that yeah. yeah, it really is. Sammy, you on board? You doing it, Sammy? Nope. No. What do you mean no? No. What kind of answer is that? I'm not laying two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> If if I told you you could lay two fifty on the sun coming up tomorrow, would you lay two fifty? Oh, I hate. What is that? Matt Metcalf talking to you? That's what Metcalf always says. We always do this hypothetical <laughs> thing. He's like, I'm like, that was like the ESPN writer a couple of years ago did that story. It was like the preseason best bets, and his best bet was Dodgers make playoffs, and it was minus fourteen hundred. And I just nice. grilled this guy, and I go, you can't lay fourteen hundred. And Metcalf goes. Would you lay fourteen hundred on the sun coming up tomorrow? I go shut the hell off, dude. That's not the conversation we're having. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm looking at some of the other ones here. Well, yeah. I would be tempted to go under ten and a half on Oklahoma. Under ten and a half is minus one twenty. But basically, it, you're saying, are they going to lose Saturday in Bedlam? Because the other three games are West Virginia at BYU yeah. and home TCU. Uh, they, you look at some of the underlying numbers here with, with, with Oklahoma, Sammy, in terms of like the yards per play, like they're not great. They rank behind like Oklahoma State and they rank behind you know, Iowa State. They rank behind a lot of these big 12 teams. And, and, and you were all over KU last week and it was absolutely miserable there. Wouldn't surprise me if, uh, if Gundy got, uh, got, got OU this week. Because I, I think this game in terms of the rivalry – means a hell of a lot more to get the last laugh on the last scheduled Bedlam meeting for Oak State 
uh, than, than it does OU. It numbers up to six. You, you, you think we might get a six and a half by kick, or you think six is going to be as high as this goes? We won't get seven, I can tell you that. And this is one of those origination things I want to talk about. You know, when a sports book throws up a number, they throw up a six instead of an eight, or they throw up, you know, a nine instead of an 11. Like they are building in that respect for the dog. You know, when you open something up sub seven, which is, in my opinion, the most key number in college football, it tells you something there. There's that built in respect, and it looks so easy, guys to look at the board or log into your app and go, oh, Oklahoma's only got to win by seven, and then they lose outright. It's just, that is a trap line to me. Not a trap, not that these books set traps. I don't think that's a, a thing where the pie's under the sheet and you go for the pie and then you fall in the hole. But that that opening at Oklahoma six tells me that there's a lot of respect in the desert for the Pokes. I'm so glad you said that because we, we, you mentioned Chris Andrews before as well. Uh, and he and I have had conversations about this where it's like counterintuitive like that. The, the, the first impression is, oh, it's less than seven. I'm going to lay six when the, actually you should probably be taking six. Oh, the, the number opens three and a half where, oh, I got to take the underdog. You lose by a field goal. You win where that's the first impression. But really sometimes laying the three and a half is, is, is the, the, way, the way you should go. So I'm glad, I'm glad you said that, Sammy. The one thing about this rivalry is that Oklahoma has won a lot of the games. Since 2003, they won every game but three of them, right? Like, at some point, ownage is ownage in a rivalry, and it has to something has to forcefully change in the rivalry. Is this the year that something forcefully changes to where now Oklahoma State has won two of three, right, because they won two years ago? I'm not sure Oklahoma State's at that point yet. That matters in rivalry games. The ownage matters. Because when, you know, when things get tight in games, that kind of gets in the back of your head, right? Like, oh, boy, here we go again. Oklahoma's going to just win this game. And so I think that is Oklahoma good enough to force themselves out of this purgatory and the rivalry in this game? Oklahoma State, I should say. I'm not sure they can do that quite yet. That's my question about this game. Will, any, any, any thoughts on uh, on Bedlam? Just, just such a bummer. This is the last one. It's, uh, I know it's part of the game now in college football, but it's too bad. This is one of these games you look forward to, and you just you mark it off every year. So, too bad. This is the last one. I, I can't lay six with this Oklahoma team. It looked for a minute last week like, here we go again with Oklahoma. They basically get 14 free points. I know, you know, Sammy and I were sweating out Kansas. So, uh, terrible job by the Oklahoma coaching staff too. They got so conservative in some of those spots where, uh, just, just did not do their team any favors. But it, it'd be Oklahoma. It'd be dog or pass for me. Which had been quite opposite of what Venables and, and letting those guys have done because yeah. they've kind of been a little more analytic driven and taking chances throughout the year. I, I hit I hit on the uh, the Jaden Daniels Heisman ticket before. I like the Tigers getting three against Alabama. I like think we saw what Texas's offense did uh, with their quarterback and receivers. I, I think with Daniels and, and neighbors, the LSU wide receivers. I think they're going to give Alabama. Uh, a, a ton of problems. This number, it, like I said, down to three. You got to go back to that 2010 Auburn game to find the last time that Alabama has been this short uh, of a home favorite. So it's been a while. The odds makers usually err on the side of we'll trust Nick Saban and Alabama and, and make these numbers higher. But here the number is lower, which again, to get back to the conversation, leads me to believe that uh, they're looking for Alabama money here. So uh, I don't know. Like I, said, I, I like LSU. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, Jeff, I think you disagree with me. Uh, I do, yeah. Because um, I, I just think when you look at a game like this, we have two offenses that are similar. Now, LSU is much better, but Monroe can throw the ball deep, but they have an explosive pass offense at times. And the other side of the ball, as I mentioned earlier to you, Bear, you, you have an, an LSU defense that's, that absolutely stinks. And I don't trust a, a team on the road to just play good defense all of a sudden. So Alabama's going to have that edge all game. Alabama's defense can get stops. LSU's defense cannot. So I can't back a team on the road uh, who's only getting three points. They, they can't play any defense. Sammy? Yeah, this total is an LSU-type total, too. I mean, when we see an Alabama game totaled in the 60s, you're like, wait a minute, what's going on? Well, LSU's defense is really bad. And I, I, I can make a case for both sides, so it's a pass for me. I hate to, you know, be boring, but... I, clearly LSU has the better quarterback. The last time we saw a team play Alabama with the quarterback edge was Texas and Quinn Ewers went off 34, 24. I think the final score, the horns won it. LSU has the edge at quarterback for sure. 
But I'll tell you what, guys, this Saban thing, like, it's so scary to bet against a hot Alabama team. Like, they were sort of <laughs> jerky jerky early in the season, but they have figured out a lot of things defensively over the last three to four weeks. And that team is playing much better football than they were in early September. So it's a pass for me. Lean to the home team, but I got better investments to make. Like Colorado under five and a half wins, minus 250. Um, how, about this? <laughs> how, how about if you like Bama, you parlay Bama with the under. If you like LSU, you parlay it with the over. Isn't that correlated? If we get a high scoring game, isn't that LSU? If we get more of an under game, is that Bama? It, does that seems make like sense it. or no? Yeah. It, it, it seems like it to me. It, it seems like a pretty simple game theory, game, game flow handicap. All right. Who wants to hold their nose? Swallow, swallow hard, turn away, and grab three Ooh. points with Clemson this week. Not me. I do. Yeah, I'll take me it. too. I didn't want to be the I'll first to it. say it. <laughs> I, I, hey, did you hear the inside job rumor that the devil had that caller planted? Like, devil set that up with the radio show? <laughs> the guy who called. So why are you making I did all not hear that. I, I did not hear that. Yeah, yeah. There's this, there's this, like, Reddit theory that devil planted the guy because – you know, we've all done radio before. That guy had way too much shelf life. He went on for minutes. And then Devil comes in and, you know, Devil gives the answer that he gives. I, I just think that they're going to win this game. That's how college football works, right? Notre Dame comes in, three-point favorite. Notre Dame's so much better. Clemson's four and four. And then Clemson just plays the game of its season and wins this game. You're, you're with me, Will? We're going to take three? I am with you. It's just, a, again, it's sort of like USC where it's just a good buy low spot. This is like, I'm not a fan of Dabo. I'm not a fan of the quarterback, but I mean, at home getting three and remember Notre Dame, this is the end of a long season. Remember they started a week earlier in, in Ireland. They've had a lot of travel. They've had a lot of tough games down to the wire. They've had a couple of, of you know, laughers the past couple of weeks, but this is the end of a long season for Notre Dame. Maybe they're a little tired. I'm with you. I like Clemson plus the three. Yeah. No, no chance of taking Clemson. I'm not taking Notre Dame, <laughs> but I'm not taking Clemson either. I mean, there's a, you know, you mentioned USC, Will. Like, USC, by, by low spot, like, they're fighting their asses off. I, they're not good. They're not good. But they're, like, there's no, like, is Clemson still playing th as hard as USC? No, and, right no, and no Will Shipley, potentially, too. He's still in concussion protocol, like, I think, as of the time we're recording this. I, I just, I don't know if they're giving the same level of care as USC in this game. And, again, USC's going to, they played hard last week. I, I was watching that entire game, protest aside and weird. Okay. Very, very quickly, guys. Oh, yeah. Very quickly. <laughs> the live first half line for USC Cal was eight and a half, okay? You, Cal's up 11 at halftime, right? It, it was USC minus eight and a half. Cal's up 11 at halftime. They give Cal, they give USC that extra play at the, that, that yep. extra field, the extra play. They missed the field goal, though. But if they had kicked the field goal to, to go up eight and cover that first half number, what oh, would the books goodness. have done? they would have already paid everyone out, right? They would have paid everyone out already for the first half live totally, live first half number. It was Cal plus eight and a half. Would, what would books have done there? In the, it's the first time in, in history of college football, someone got a free play to start the second half. It was the last play of the first half. What would the books have done that situation? It was just, it was just the Pac-12 looking to favor USC like they always did. Yeah, they, they would have to pay everyone out, basically, right? Just pay both sides, essentially. I would, just to, I would think that's probably what, what yeah. ultimately would have happened. How about that? They gave him an extra play. Never before ever seen that. I think with some so of these books, will, if you don't I take know your you, I, winnings right away, they can correct it, I think. I mean, that's definitely a new one, though. I don't know if, <laughs> if Sammy has any intel on that. That's definitely a strange one. Yeah, that's a tough one. Will, I, I know you follow, like, the, the these line movements and uh, with that Iowa Northwestern uh, number opened up at 29 and a half, and, <laughs> and now it's up to 31. That probably signifies them, uh, some pretty, pretty sharp as attack type move up to the over here, right? Well, you want, you want yeah, to go over so 31 now? No, but I mean, at 29, I get it. I know, but man, at like when you're betting under 29 and a half, like just, I mean, obviously a 17, 13 game, which is a very low scoring college football game is still an over. It's just such an <laughs> absurd number. It's so absurd to have a 29, 30, the same week you have a 76, 76 and a half. And it's the same sport. It's not like, you know, this is different leagues or different sports. This is the same exact sport. It's really, it's hard to explain. You also have to consider in that Sammy. game, we look, at the, we look at the weather, but more importantly, the wind. Um, pay attention to that game because as we get closer to the weekend, we'll get a much clearer forecast. That game is at Wrigley. So Wrigley Field, if you've never been, is about a mile, a mile and a half off of Lake Michigan. And it could start whipping that thing. So you could have potentially like 
15 to 20 mile an hour winds for two offenses that can't pass. I think Northwestern is still going to be on the backup Sullivan at quarterback. Iowa clearly can't throw the ball. So if you have two teams that can't throw to begin with, with 40 degree, yeah. high 30 degree temps and 20 mile an hour winds, it could be 10 to seven final at Wrigley. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did they have they figured out the the, the deal with the end zones yet because i remember at one point like they were talking about like going like only in one direction because the way the field was lined up like it was too close to the wall on the other side like are, are they going the, the full length i saw the field i saw a video from they posted the big 10 posted with wrigley getting like the renovation they, they time lapsed okay. it. it looks like it's a full field okay but sammy mentioned whipping whipping at home like that's what i'm, I'm going to be doing on on saturday with the breeders cup so make sure you follow uh I'll, I'll put some picks out there on uh oh little ponies get my get my my paper roll the paper it's, whip it's pony season already it's always pony season i know it is it's pretty, pretty did you say you're going to be shit. whipping right, at right. home is that what you just said whip whip whipping whip yeah you get you 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 is that a separate podcast you host let me just run down here <laughs> you, you you get a racing form you get a sheet of paper and then you That's we need the bear bets graphic team to get on this. We need a cartoon of this. We need bear cartoonized whipping things. That's what we need. Exactly right. Yeah, just so you sit at home whipping your your racing form as you watch the horses go down the track. I like Sometimes with some Arby's. But yeah, yeah. With some Arby's. With, with some Arby's. Yes. Or, or, or fries, some Popeyes right. or some Taco Bell or Curly Fry. And well, guys, we'll take any food for anyone listening. Any food exactly. you want to send look, us, look, look. please. Right. We'll, we'll eat it all. <laughs> Sa Sammy teased us before. Now it's time to deliver on your promise. Talk to us. We we've been waiting. All right, so I made the game Yale minus four and the total 54. But I, I think the, the power rating is a little bit higher for the guys in the desert on Yale. I think we might get Brown plus six. And as we know, this this podcast last week pretty much launched the total up three points, unfortunately. So <laughs> I, I thought we were going to get a 52, and it opened 54 and a half. So I, I, I love Brown getting near a touchdown, if that's the case. Uh, that's a 12 o'clock game on Saturday, so the Lions going to probably open like 10 o'clock Eastern. I will have the boys on full alert via text. But if we can get Brown Please. plus six, or maybe maybe we get a seven, guys. I promise you, anything six seven is going to get hit on Brown. So I'm hoping for for Brown near a touchdown. If it opens 55, I think that's just a little too high this week. Where is this game? It is in Providence, Rhode Island. Oh, okay, it's in Providence, and the weather weather is fine. I'm about to just going to give you the weather report right now. A high of 59, winds five to ten, so Ooh, no no football. precipitation. A, a true fall Saturday in the Northeast, perfect for Ivy League football. So. Um, now we're ready to go. Big, that's it. Turn on big noon kickoff at, at, at 10 a.m. Eastern. Have your apps up in your book and, and, and multitask at the same time. Well, watch big noon, and you could probably catch me on the, uh, the side of the set. Well, actually, you know what? I can't this week. Well, I'm, I'm in a terrible state. Where are you at this Texas. week? Texas. Oh, yeah, you can't, you can't do it there, can you? Probably, be able to, probably will be able to bet at the Vatican before you will be able to in the state of Texas. <laughs> Awful. Text my guys in the desert to do it for you. Someone will do it for you. You could buy whips and, and, and now my, now, <laughs> I can. <laughs> this is true. A big, big, big rodeo state. All right. Well, what, what, what else? What else we got, Jeff? Anything that we, we missed on that you you kind of want to get out there? And I think we hit it all today. We we did. I know we didn't hit it all. I know we didn't hit it all. Will Will, what didn't we hit on that you like? Uh, service Academy getting 18 and a half. I know army stinks, but I mean, just, it, it, this is one of these blind trends and I'm not a huge trend guy, but when you have two service academies, army and air force, and you can give me 18 and a half, I don't even think about it. I don't look twice. I'm going to take the, take those points there. I think the familiarity, the clock running, especially with the new rules, give me army plus 18 and a half. And you're right. 18 of the last 21 service Academy meetings underdog is covered and it should have been 19 to 21 with the ridiculousness that Navy had yeah. against the Air Force oh, in that God. game where they, why, why are we going for two? And that obviously you lose by 11 instead of 10 and the line's 10 and a half and it falls 11 and, and the favorite actually wind up covering. But that after was awful too because I was like, too. I lie after a pick six and I lie live bet uh, Navy to get shut out as well. And they scored late and it was, I was so pissed off and unhappy. And then not only did they, they, they score, 
the underdog didn't cover because they yep. went for two in a 17-6 game with like a second left. So that that that, that did not make me happy. The Sam, Navy quarterback turned into Anything? Patrick Mahomes that final drive. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, th- I've been doing this since I was like 17 years old, Bear. The old college zigzag. Nobody wanted to bet Kansas except for Will and I last week. Kansas has a huge win, bowl eligible now. Lance is all excited, and now they go on the road and and play Iowa State. And and that side got steamed. Uh, Iowa State opened one. Now it's like two and a half painted. I think we might see some threes by Saturday. This is a tough spot for Kansas, an emotional win. You beat Oklahoma. Now you leave home and go on the road. I think the Cyclones are very, very uh, live here to win this game by like seven to ten points. I'm going to lay two and a half. I'm going to lay a little bit more when we get off the show. And, and, and Iowa State, one of those teams that's in, in that four and one mix in the Big 12 where like somehow it's not all- – necessarily a foregone conclusion that we're going to get uh, a rematch of Oklahoma and Kansas and you know, Oklahoma and Texas rather in the big 12 drive. That, that, that actually, what, 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 that's one other question I had for you before we go, should we be betting like Kansas state maybe to win the big 12 before this game goes on Saturday? Mm. I mean, not knowing the health of Quinn Ewers is certainly perplexing. Uh, you know, they said he's going to miss quote multiple weeks if he's out there with a bad throwing shoulder, Texas is severely limited offensively. So I don't, I didn't have that idea coming into this program, but that might not be a bad idea to take another team in the big 12, because if he's not ready to go, you also have to think about this. His camp is going to hold him off of the draft because he can't potentially go out there. If he's nowhere near hundred percent and play in a high quality game. So that might not be a bad idea. Yeah, I see five to one at uh, at DraftKings while I'm looking here, and then I see uh, what are they at FanDuel here? Uh, Kansas State six to one. It is a Texas plus one hundred five, Oklahoma plus one eighty five, uh, K State plus six to one at FanDuel. That's the of the two that I quickly looked up. Can I interest you in that at all? Um, the number would be better, obviously, today than it will be if they right. beat Texas. If you're gonna I mean, do, like, you're gonna do it, you got to do wager. it before Saturday. Yeah, that's a wager, yeah. All right. I think that's it. Now I think we've officially covered everything. Yep. Even though I know that's not true. I feel like we hit every conference, though. I is hope there, so. Yeah, is there, there, there's no Mac in this weekend. It's only on Tuesday and yeah, Thursday. I was going to say, I mean, Tuesday, no, no, no Mac <laughs> games on the weekend. I am actually looking forward to, and hopefully some people will listen to it before Thursday night. I am looking forward to South Alabama Troy on Thursday night. That's going to be a, uh, a a very good game, and I'm looking forward to uh, to watching that. All right, gents, until next week. Appreciate it, guys. Fantastic gamma, good chat as usual. And I think you guys get and the gist of this show by did now. We cover all sports, by the way. It doesn't cover, we can cover all sports if we, we want did. to. I, I gave a little horse racing. You did give horse racing. We we had Rangers, I think, yep. futures. The Rangers yep. won la- one. Uh, you you mentioned basketball totals that you yes. have in your in your account. So there we go. Um I, I hope people that are listening that have been listening now for this entire process, which has been thank you so much. You guys know we actually do wager on these games by now. But if you're new, this is your first week. We will wager on Ivy League totals. We will do it. We did it last week. Oh, We're yes, doing we it again this week. If 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 Sammy says take Brown plus six, I'm maybe my kids' flag football game. It's at 10 30 a.m. on Saturday. And we get there about 9 30, have to warm up. I'm gonna wait for that text from Sammy that says go bet. Go bet this. It's up now. Go wager on it. I will absolutely wager on it. Might have to have you throw an extra couple of units on there for me being that I'll be in Austin, Texas. and I won't I'll be in North there. Carolina, buddy. I'm not doing it legally. Ooh, oh, you're, ooh, I'm, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. I'm, you, I'm just, what do you mean? Ill- 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 well, it's not illegal. It's just offshore. I mean, is that, is it? Oh, Jeb, I'm, what, what am I going <laughs> to? How dare you? How dare you place a, a wager at an offshore sports book? No one's ever done that before. Everything's, they, everything's above board. January 4th, baby. They said we're getting, we're getting legal wagering. January 4th is the earliest day, and then it said it could be as late as June. <laughs> it's like some, sometime in the first half of the year, you're going to get legal sports wagering. Gonna, Let's yeah. talk about the wagers that uh, that Bear has made legally uh, so far this week. <laughs> Virginia Tech <laughs> plus nine and a half. LSU <laughs> plus three. Illinois plus two and a half. USC plus three. Uh, all right. Best bet, buddy. Where are you going? Yeah, I I, 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 I mentioned it with Will before how we were going to be oppo on this game. I, I laid 11 with Utah against Arizona State. Like I, I know ASU has been a lot better in recent weeks. Easily could have beaten UW in Seattle and, and then broke through against Wazoo yeah. last week. But I, I just think that the situation here on the spot for both of these teams, they got ASU coming off the emotional high of finally getting that win against Wazoo. Big win for them. Utah got absolutely drilled at home in its last game by Oregon. 
And I would expect that Kyle Whittingham and Morgan Staley would kind of figure that defense out and kind of have them uh, back on track against this, against ASU this week. I, I, I can't imagine them dropping consecutive home games. Uh, Again, I'm laying double digits yeah. with, with, with the Utes. And again, the Utah offense is not great by any means, but, but uh, this is more of a in, in Utah defense I trust. Yeah. Th- th- this could be one of those 27 13 kind of games. So that's right. It's funny. That's right. The total, the total is 41, is 40? 41 and a half. Yeah. Um, I took the under in this game. Utah has gone under in all their games outside of the USC game, which again, no one goes under against USC. And then they scored a light touching. Uh, Against Cal, but think about Arizona State. It's interesting because they had not scored a lot of points till this past weekend, no. um, and they have struggled to score points. Now you're going on the road at a Utah team that you know still has a lot to play for. They're a prideful team, and they didn't play well against Oregon. So I think that Utah, to your point about what this number, you know, twenty seven ten, like that, like that's certainly a situation where Arizona State just can't score in this game, and Utah gets back on track. They their offense, Utah's offense, can't score but had been pretty okay against everyone besides Oregon. Like, they, they've moved the ball against Cal. They moved the ball against USC. Arizona State's defense is not those teams. Pretty okay against teams outside of Oregon. That, 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 that's a motto and a goal and words to live by. We want, we want so. to be pretty okay against yeah. teams outside of Oregon. Their points were driver less than Iowa, though. <laughs> it's just... But again, they they had done better against the bad defenses. Arizona State defense is not terribly good. I'm with you here. I like the under in that one as well. I'm going back west for my best bet as I've done. I'm going back to the well. I took Arizona last week. I'm taking them again this week at plus three. They're hosting UCLA. Arizona might be the second best team in the Pac-12 conference right now. What UCLA does best, it's it's unlike chip teams, right? They're great on defense. Their front four might be the best in the entire country. But Arizona, guys, has an offensive line that's pretty good. They have a, a left tackle who's going the first round. That matchup between him and Law 2 might determine if, if I cover this game. More, more than anything else, though, Arizona, again, they're playing good football. Defensively, they're 54th right now. Points per drive. They're much better than they were last season. They're at home again. The desert is where teams go to die. We talked about this last weekend as well. And UCLA is, is worse on the road. The quarterback situation is not great in, in, uh, in, in Westwood as well. They're rotating guys through. So I'm going back to the well. Arizona plus three here, Barry. Yeah, yeah how, how about that? Like Gar- you, you bring in Garbers to avoid the interceptions from Dante Moore, and you get well, last week was a was bad. Yeah, yeah. just total. But Arizona, Arizona's playing good football. I know they like, are. They're put like they're putting it together. Jed Fish came in there and said, "We're going to fix the offense first. They did that this offseason. They spent fixing the defense. It's, it's what Lincoln Riley wanted to do at USC, which is right. we're do offense first, defense next. And it, Jed Fish actually done it to Arizona. Correct. They they bottomed out. He did it the right. Like okay, we 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 are not going yeah. to be good, but you got to strip it down to the nuts and bolts and then rebuild it. And he's done that and. Uh, when they move into the Big 12 next year, they'll, they'll be they'll be in much better position. Hopefully, for Arizona's sake, uh, yeah. Jed Fish will still will still be there. So that's it. That's my bet. That's it. Yeah. Uh, Chips, my guy. So I may, maybe I'll, I'll work for a a two point UCLA win. Because <laughs> even though I'm mad at him for for not covering last week, it's not his fault. He didn't fumble the football. No, he didn't fumble the football or miss the field goal. Or that's okay. That happens. Okay. We, we did it. We, we made enough. We made more bets during the show again with with Col- uh, well Colorado. I took that. I took that immediately. Yeah, I, 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 I I have no problem laying laying that money because you, you you're laying it. And who who who's who's Colorado? Colorado's winning two more games this year. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. I, they're not beating Oregon State this weekend. No, and they're not going to win in Salt Lake. And they're not. They might beat Pullman. That's about it. They're not beating Arizona. I don't think. So yeah, that's it. We'll yeah. see. We'll we'll have an opportunity maybe to get plus money back if we need to. But we'll see, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Appreciate everybody again for watching, listening, downloading Spotify, uh, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, mentioned earlier, but last week was the highest uh, downloaded rated Fantastic. episode, which is awesome. I'm so happy that people are enjoying the format. And um, even though we're not supplying as many winners as we did last year, maybe it works out as an opportunity. Maybe people are fading us. And sometimes knowing who to bet against is even more valuable than to know who you should be betting on. But one thing is for sure, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs>